Hello, my name's Elise, aka Assassin Agent, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I can see recently that many of you have been enjoying my unboxing videos a lot, and while I will be continuing to post a mix of content related to various video games and video game consoles, I am excited that I have something new to unbox today. And not only will I be doing an unboxing, but I also will be doing a bit of a comparison as well. So for today, and obviously as you can tell from the title of this video, I'm going to be unboxing the brand new wireless gaming headphones that just came out on March 30th from Bang & Olufsen. And I do hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Interestingly, this launched just, I think, a little bit under two weeks after the Xbox wireless headset as well. And so as part of the comparison for today, I actually do have the Xbox wireless headset too. So that'll be interesting to compare and contrast the two. As I do my unboxing, I will be talking through the differences in the features. There are, are definitely some things that this one has, some nice bells and whistles that the Xbox wireless headset does not. And I do hope to see a big difference in the audio quality as well because for those that don't know the Xbox wireless headset retails right now for 99 US dollars while this new headset retails for 499 US dollars. So really, really interesting, some, some very different price points there. So I'm excited to unbox this and check this out. Um, okay, so for starters, it is in uh, shrink wrap, so I'm going to need scissors. Um, before I do though, just kind of looking at the packaging. I mean, it's cool. I don't know that it's anything special. I really like the picture on the front. Looks like this is a very sleek design. I'm excited to see what they look like in person. So now I'm gonna do the scary stuff with the scissors. Okay, I got, I got the shrink wrap off. I did have this shipped. It was in like a really boring bag, so I just kind of took that out beforehand. I hope that's not cheating in the unboxing process. I can see the box got like a little dented in shipping. That's a bummer, but I, I feel confident everything will be okay on the inside. <laughs> Let's uh, open it up. I'm not doing a good job at opening the box. <laughs> it's like suction cup together. Okay, there we go. All right. Ooh. Ooh. That's really interesting. So like just opening this, I, like I just took the top off and there they are right on the inside. This is reminding me very much of the actual Xbox unboxing experience where I just kind of opened the top and there it was. I'm not digging through a lot of stuff. So it's nice that it's right there. Let's see if I can get this out. Nice. Ooh, this feels really nice and soft. <laughs> Let's get the plastic off. So also as I'm unboxing this to kind of just talk through some of the features and the differences between this and the actual Xbox wireless headset. Both are wireless, but one of the huge differences is the fact that this headset actually comes with its own app where you can further fine tune some of the features. So I am curious to see how that app works. So then if I put them on, oh my gosh. Like they're not turned on, they're not actually doing anything yet, but they already muffled the sound in the room, which is really cool. They also do feel really soft. I don't know how else to explain that, but initially they feel really, really comfortable. The other thing that's really interesting about this that you might notice right away is that it doesn't have a noticeable microphone. It does have a microphone, but it's built into the headset itself, which I think is really cool because I'm usually constantly fiddling with that microphone to kind of get it in the right place. So I'm curious how the built-in microphone is gonna work in this compared with one of those microphones that you adjust in front of your mouth. So it does have some buttons right on the side of that over the ear area. You probably can't see that really too well as my camera adjusts. But on the side here, you can find the power button. Uh, you can find where you charge it with a Thunderbolt cable, which that reminds me, does it come with one? I'm sure it does, right? Ooh, okay, wait, there's more in the box. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna take this out. That's what the headphones were in. And then underneath, like really nicely tucked underneath the box, we've got a couple more little boxes. So let me see here. 
Let's see this one. Interesting. Okay, so we got kind of your very typical headphone jack. Important safety instructions. Um, we got another box here. In this box, yeah, that's what I thought. This is your Thunderbolt cable. And there are no instructions in this one. <laughs> and then I have a quick start guide. Ooh, that's stuck to the box. Okay, so I've got this nice little like one card cheat sheet quick start guide. That's very, very cool. Anyway, like I said, not only is this an unboxing, but it is also a comparison. So I'm definitely going to set these up and test them out. Okay, time for a little voiceover. As you can see, I downloaded the Bain & Olufsen app to my iPhone, and then I did need to set up an account for it. I do want to mention that this is separate from the Dolby Atmos app, which you might hear about as another app that you can use with these headphones. And that Dolby Atmos app is actually something that you use directly on your Xbox. I also want to note that neither app is really required to actually use the headphones. Once I got the Bain & Olufsen app set up, I did play around with connecting the Beoplay Portal headphones to the Xbox wirelessly and to my phone via Bluetooth. And the app actually allows you to toggle between the two connections. I also fiddled around with the app features and tried adjusting the headphones with the physical controls that are on the back of them as well. I did play a new game that was recently launched called It Takes Two to test out the game sound quality and also the chat functionality with a friend. And once I was in the game, that's where I made sure to switch back and forth between the portal headphones and the Xbox wireless headphones to get a good comparison between the two. Unfortunately, your hearing a recording of all that gameplay via YouTube will not do justice to the audio quality that I I was hearing, so that's why I'm trying to do my best here to just explain the experience via voiceover. What I liked about the Portal headphones is that I could use them separately from the app for a simplified but still pretty awesome listening experience, but the app did have some cool features in it too, such as being able to fine tune how much of my own voice I could hear back in the headphones, and it had some preset listening modes for different types of gameplay, and those are just a few examples. I also found that using the app was a little bit easier and more intuitive as well for adjusting even the simple settings such as overall volume and the game to chat audio ratio versus using the sliders that were on the back of the physical headphones. However, I do need to point out that I did eventually run into some hiccups trying to switch between the phone's Bluetooth and the Xbox connection, so that was a little weird. Nothing major, I did get it connected, it was just a little bit clunky for me personally. With the Xbox wireless headphones, you can technically recreate those listening modes that were in the Bing & Olufsen app for the Portal headphones. If you just go to your Xbox and go to the device settings and mess around with that equalizer. And of course, with the Xbox wireless headphones, you can also fine tune your overall volume and adjust the game to chat audio ratio with sliders that are physically on that headset. I also want to mention that the Dolby app can be used with the Xbox wireless headphones as well, so that app is not exclusive to the Portal headphones. However, as far as I know, it's not free, and honestly, I haven't checked out the Dolby app, so I can't really comment much on it other than that. Overall, I found the more I tested the app, it had some nice bells and whistles, and I was enjoying it, but to be honest, it wasn't something that differentiated it enough to justify the $400 price difference between the Portal headphones and the Xbox wireless headphones. But let me talk a little bit more about the sound quality for a minute. I would say honestly that using the Portal headphones gave me the most crisp, clear audio experience I have ever had playing Xbox. The Xbox wireless headphones were definitely a major step up though as well compared with older headsets that I had been using. However, when I compared the two, there were definitely some differences there. For example, in the party chat, I noticed on the Xbox wireless headphones that it sounded a little bit muffled compared with the portal headphones. The other thing too was with the game audio, on the Xbox wireless headphones, you had a nice surround sound experience, but to me it kind of sounded like everything was blending a little bit. Whereas with the portal headphones, what I was hearing 
was almost like three-dimensional sound. I don't know if that's the best way to describe that, but what I mean is that without even trying to think too much about what I was hearing, I couldn't help but pick up on every little detail and every little type of sound with the portal headphones. Everything from how the music sounded to hearing the sound of my footsteps in the snow to water running in the distance. It was like every sound, every detail was so distinct from one another. It was like that, that audio was just 3D. Also, I couldn't tell on my end, of course, but from what my friend was telling me, the virtual mic on the portal headphones was working really well too. It was doing a great job at picking up my voice, but not all the sound in the room, and basically functioned just the same as an actual boom mic would. And I did find that as I played, the portal headphones were a little bit more comfortable on my head than the Xbox wireless headphones. With that being said, you're probably wondering what my concluding thoughts are on the Portal headphones and ultimately if I would recommend them. Overall, I do have to say that my audio experience with these playing Xbox was pretty pristine. It was really amazing and I definitely can see the quality in these headphones. However, I do think that the app was more of a nice to have and I did have some slight connectivity issues. I also am struggling with that $499 price point, especially if you plan to use these headphones exclusively for Xbox gaming. So with that, if that's what you want to use these headphones for, I actually would not recommend these, especially when you can get the Xbox wireless headphones for just $100. And I do feel that these are still a pretty significant step up from at least the previous wired headsets that I had been using. I do want to note, however, that with the Beoplay Portal headphones, you can use them for more than just Xbox gaming, even though that's what they were designed for. So you can connect them to your phone, PC, you can use them for other gaming experiences, you can also use them to listen to music, take calls, all sorts of things. So if these are really meant to be more of your go-to set of headphones for all different applications, then I do think that is a major game changer, and that definitely justifies the high higher price point. I also want to give this overall unboxing and first impressions experience with the Portal headphones a very quick strawberry rating, which is something I did in my last unboxing video with the Nintendo Switch, and also similar to that video. Overall, I would give this experience also a 4 out of 5 strawberries rating. Reason being is, like I said, I think that these are really high quality headphones. However, there were a couple little things I didn't like so much, such as the connectivity issues. And as far as the unboxing goes, I did really appreciate being able to very easily get the headphones out of the box once I got the box open and it was a very simplified experience. However, there was nothing really special about the packaging. Uh, it wasn't particularly stylish, at least when I'm comparing this with unboxings I did for the Xbox Series X and even the Oculus Quest 2, where that was a simplified, easy unboxing experience too. The packaging was still quite stylish and there was something kind of entertaining about seeing how they presented that product. That's why between both the unboxing itself and my first impressions with the product, I would give it four out of five strawberries. Anyway, that does it for today's video. I do hope you enjoyed today's content, and if so, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if in general you've been liking the content on this channel, please be sure to subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you later.